Lord Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for making it possible for us to spend this time with you. We thank you, Lord, for all the wonderful favors and the graces that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of this new day. You have given us another opportunity to share in your wonderful love. Another opportunity to share this same love with others around us. And Lord, above all, you give us the comfort and the protection that we require. As we gather before you, we ask you, Lord, to give us the grace so that we can dedicate our entire selves to you. There are various distractions, various thoughts which keep coming in our minds. We ask you, Lord, to give us the grace to deal with these. Worries, anxieties, feelings of anger, frustration, jealousy. We place all of these at your feet, O Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to give us the blessings in order to grow in more deeper and intimate relationship with you. As we spend this time with you, Lord, we reflect on the gospel passage of today. Once again, we see that in this gospel passage, you tell us some things that we can include in our day-to-day -day lives. And as we spend this time with you, Lord, we also bring before you all those who have asked us to pray for them. We bring our personal intentions as well as their personal intentions before you, O Lord. And we ask you, Lord, to hear our prayers. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us, Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. In this lyrical text, Jesus introduces us to the great mystery of God sharing his life with us. I am the vine. You are the branches. My father is the vine grower. The life that courses through the Holy Trinity is the same life that runs through my veins. The vine is a special tree where the distinction between the trunk and the branches is more difficult to make out than in other trees. God shares his own life with me. I spend time in wonder and thanksgiving asking to be worthy of such a grace. Abide in me as I abide in you. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. This is the advice that Jesus gives us on the eve of his passion, his final message within the intimacy of the circle of his dearest friends. I let this invitation resound in my heart, asking for the grace to grow in my intimacy with Jesus, my Savior, so that my life will bear much fruit. And as we begin to enter into today's Gospel passage, let us spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on these words that we have heard. What does it mean for us to abide in Jesus? In what way? Is Jesus the vine and in what way are we the branches? Let us personalize and reflect on these lines and draw some fruit for our spiritual life. Abide in me as I abide in you. Only Jesus can say these words. 
they sound so incredible jesus abides in me and i am invited to abide in him so that i can produce abundant fruit i pray for the desire of a deeper relationship with jesus and for a truthful life today i am invited to recognize my close relationship with jesus which he compares to the relationship between a vine and the branches that grow on it what does it mean for my life that the life of jesus flows in me what does it mean for me personally to know that i am as much a part of jesus as the branch is part of the vine are there things in my life that would be different if i consciously realized this what are they i reflect on these things i talk to jesus about them and i ask the holy spirit to guide and enlighten me and let us spend a few moments in silence reflecting on these questions asking the lord to help us in our reflection and to help us come more closer to him God cherishes his people Israel like a shepherd guards his flock or to use another comparison God is like a wine dresser lovingly tending Israel the true wine overseeing everything and standing by in crisis keeping the plant healthy even as persecution cuts off and prunes branches Christians have also been called members of Christ's body We are in mystical union with him part of the whole Christ as such in authentic union with Christ we today at the same time both represent him to the world and also give glory to the father no wonder then we are awarded with the assurance you may ask what you will and you shall get it apart from me you can do nothing we could call to mind our total dependence on Christ for life and love we recall his many gifts over the years and ask for more the father is pruning us working deep in our hearts to draw us closer to himself in Christ am i resisting his efforts let us ask for the gift of openness to his pruning work jesus is telling us that the very core of our existence is to be connected with him he invites me to abide to rest to stay to remain in him so the divine life flows in and through me do i have a sense of this abiding in him perhaps it is a challenge to me as i would like to be active and doing i take some time to realize how it is that i need to be connected with the very life of jesus to know the beating of his heart to receive life from him just as a great branch fr- receives from the vine this rare parable in john is rich in echoes of the old testament but its context of the last supper gives it a eucharistic significance it is spoken just as the disciples have taken his blood in the form of wine and so it manifests the closest possible union between the lord and his followers the fruits of a christian life are the work of god each of us can see the life and work of god in others in ministry in love in commitment courage endurance and ordinary daily kindness and compassion each of us too is gifted in some unique way we can bear fruit for god in a way that nobody else can prayer helps us to recognize the fruits develop them and offer them in the service of god and god's people
Through the analogy of the vine and the branches, Jesus invites us to be united to him. We are the branches, and if we allow the life of the vine tree to reign in us, it will bear much fruit of patience, kindness, compassion and forgiveness. A beautiful question for us Christians is this: Do I abide in Jesus or am I far from Jesus? Am I united to the vine that gives me life or am I a dead branch that is incapable of bearing fruit and giving witness? Teach me, Lord, what it is to live in you and for you to live in me. Dear Jesus, you seem to love that little word abide. You use it 8 times here. Let me love it too. Your abiding is steady. You are constantly at home with me. You don't drift off or grow bored as I do. Teach me, Lord, this art of abiding. I need to learn that I don't have to be always on the go. The grapes mature happily simply by being on the vine. they don't have to work to blossom and ripen so for me simply being with you is enough the term to abide was music to the hebrews who had been nomads and exiles they longed for a place in which they could rest permanently jesus offers not a country but his very self for this abiding relationship not place is what matters i thank god that even though my life is always changing jesus is my home my permanent resting place when i feel that my life is barren and fruitless i may come to see that this is because i am apart from jesus and can do nothing without him What happens when I pray is that Jesus word cleanses me. I may for instance think that I am of little importance to God or to the world. But if I struggle to believe that I am an intimate friend of Jesus, my self image is cleansed. If I am hard of heart, his command about love for others cleanses me if i abide in jesus heart to heart i will want only what he wants he wants divine love to flow like a river in the world this is the background of true prayer thy will be done on earth i picture a grape vine with its branches large and small which branch mirrors me is my branch healthy or a bit withered and dried can i accept the attention of the vine grower as he prunes this branch can i trust that my branch can bear much fruit at harvest time god sets me up in the world but he does not then go away and leave me to myself instead god abides in me i am wrapped around in god's friendship lord May I turn to be a good and faithful friend to you. How do I abide in the Lord? Above all by prayer, raising my heart and mind to God each morning. This is how we as a community pray and abide in Jesus and draw strength from him. And having reflected on this gospel passage we ask the lord to give us the grace that we may abide in him that we may put our trust in him our faith in him so that he may lead us on in life lord jesus we ask you to be with us and to guide us just as the vine grower prunes the branches you too prune us in the areas where we need to grow and now we place our prayers and petitions before you o lord and we also bring before you the prayers and petitions 
of others who have asked us to pray for them. Together, we offer them up to you and ask you that your will be done. And as we continue reflecting on the gospel, let us now bring to mind all those who have asked us to pray for them. Let us also put forth our own prayers and petitions before the Lord. We continue to pray for the ongoing pandemic situation. We pray for the victims. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff, all those who toil day and night. We also pray for all those in charge of administering the vaccines. We ask the Lord to be with them so that whatever they do, it may be for the common good. We also ask and pray that the government authorities may take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We also pray for those who celebrate their birthdays and their wedding anniversaries today. And we ask you, Lord, to be with them, guide them and give them good health of mind and body. We also pray for all those who are preparing for the exams and those who are yet to answer the exam. We ask you, Lord, to be with them so that all their effort and hard work may bear fruit. We also then pray for all those who have asked us to pray for them. We ask you, Lord, to listen to their prayers and to grant their intentions. We also pray for all those who feel left alone, all those who dejected, all those who have some kind of issue or the others, those who need your help. Be their rock and their support, O Lord, and guide them in their journey of life. We also pray for all those who are languishing in the destitute houses, in the home for the aged. You be their comforter, O Lord, in these times. We also pray for those who are suffering from various other ailments, we ask you, Lord, to be with them and give them good health of mind and body. We also pray for peace in the world, peace among religions, peace among nations, peace within the family, in the neighborhood, and most importantly, peace within ourselves. We also ask you, Lord, to help each and every one of us, that as we continue this journey, Help us to be reborn. Help us to transform ourselves, to live our old lives so that we may embrace a newer life that is filled with the Holy Spirit, that is filled with whatever you want us to do for you. And Lord, we also continue to pray for all those who feel lost, all those who have gone astray. Bring them, Lord, on the right path. Show them your light and bring them closer to you. And as we continue our prayer, as we have reflected on today's gospel, we ask the Lord that as we continue our day to day, doing our daily chores, our daily work, we ask you, Lord, to be with us, guide us and protect us so that our every action may reveal your love, mercy and compassion to all those around us. Amen.